Hi, my name's Brendan. I'm with Family Piano Co. We're at our Golf Mills location in Niles, Illinois. And today I'd like to walk through pretty much all of the Kawhi Grand pianos. So I want to start by talking about the action a little bit. So right here is how most folks make their action. So this is a Young Chang action, but it's very similar for Yamaha, Steinway. Some small technical differences, but they're all a traditional wooden actions. Uh, which is fine, this is how pianos have been made for roughly 100, 150 years, depending on how you want to count it. But what's cool is Kawhi has replaced a lot of these wooden parts with a superior material. And this is an ABS Styran with carbon fiber reinforcement. Um, so it's uh, lighter, stronger, stiffer, and it actually transfers the energy a little more efficiently on day one. But then long term, it doesn't swell and contract with humidity. So all these little pinpoints stay exactly the right diameter, exactly the way you want them. So uh, Kawhi's been doing this for many, many years. Um, it's been uh, very extensively studied, both um, with Kawhi-sponsored uh, studies as well as by the PTG, and it's a resounding success. So this is their third generation action, their first generation they replaced one part um, in uh, like 1975. Uh, second generation they replaced all these parts with the wood-colored ABS Styran. Um, and then the third generation they replaced um, that and they put in carbon fiber uh, to make it lighter, stronger. Now the weighting of it, when you push down, it's still going to be weighted properly. So you have the individually weighted keys. So it still has the proper weight coming down. But in here, there's just less resistance. So you have a, a more responsive action. So this is the Millennium 3 action that's going to be featured in 100% of the um, grand pianos that we're talking about exactly like this. So this is Monium 3 Action, and this is their secret sauce, this is what they use in all of uh, their pianos. So um, what we'd like to do is kind of play um, all of the pianos here, um, side by side by side, uh, using the exact same um, cell phone, and you can kind of hear it unedited on how they compare to each other. Um, I'm an okay pianist, but we've got a much better pianist right behind the camera here, so we're gonna switch. So Max is gonna take over. And uh, we're going to take a look here. Um, we've got the GL10 in white with our buddy uh, Mozart here um, in the uh, polished ebony and then the polished mahogany. So we're going to play a little bit on the GL10 here. Right off the bat, the first thing you're going to notice, especially when you compare it to any non kawaii piano, is that action we were talking about. Um, it's just, it, it's a really, really great action. It's very responsive, um, and it's also lightweight, but in, in a very crisp way. You know, all of your motions are very well reacted to by the instrument. Um, and it's able to, you know, walk that fine line between being a light action, but very intuitive and very um, responsive to, to your inputs. So this is the GL10. This is a five foot, zero inch piano. Um, this is kind of where the product line starts. Um, and I want to show you a couple things under the hood on it. Um, so uh, on here it has, you can kind of see, it's uh, absolutely gorgeous here. Um, now, um, this is how a lot of pianos are up top here, where you've got the uh, main uh, length of uh, string. So when you play, that's the part that vibrates. And then up top here, between the bridge and the hitch pins right here, um, you've got this um, length of string that, if you don't measure out the string length properly, it um, adds dissonance to the sound. You don't want that. So there's a little piece of felt underneath it um, that kills that, so you don't have that. Um, in it. So this is how a lot of pianos are right here. That being said, when we go jump up to the next model up, you have what's called duplex scaling. So that secondary length of string is um, actually um, uh, measured out, so it's the right length. So it doesn't vibrate directly, um, but it vibrates a little bit um, with certain notes, so it adds richness 
um, overall to the sound. So that's called duplex scaling, um, and that only really works in the treble, and it doesn't. Nobody has uh, duplex scaling in the bass. Um, just the math doesn't work out for that. Um, but the GL10 does not have the duplex scaling. Um, but um, it does have what's called, what called A graphs right here. So these um, basically just make sure that the um, strings are in precisely the correct place. So this is a feature that's on um, a lot of upper end instruments and is featured um, on all of Kawhi's grand pianos, including the GL10. Now, um, the G Kawhi uh, a couple years ago consolidated their line of pianos um, into two logical series, the GL series and the GX series. So we're going to look at both the GL and the GX. They're both very logical, GL10, GL20, GL30, GL40, GL50. And then the GX1, GX2, GX3, GX4, GX5, etc. So um, we have right here the GL10. Unfortunately, we sold out of the GL20. The GL20 does feature the... Um, duplex scaling which is really nice instead of being five foot zero inch like the gl10 it's a uh, five foot two inches so it's a little bit bigger now one difference between the gl10 gl20 and then the gl30 um, on up and all of the gx's is Kawai is a, a japanese company um, headquartered out of hamamatsu japan um, they built from the ground up their own facility in indonesia about 20 years ago they make great stuff um, in order to keep the prices low, they have the GL10 that's been made in Indonesia for a while, and they just recently switched production for the GL20 from Japan to Indonesia. Um, so, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting some of the new Indonesian built uh, GL20s and their wonderful instruments. Uh, when we go to the GL30, which is this guy on up, this is a 5.5, um, and it features the um, duplex scaling. Um, and the same number of agraphs as the GL10, GL20. Um, it's a 5.5 um, and sounds absolutely lovely. So we're gonna play a little bit on the GL30 in comparison to the GL10 that we just played. the same great action um, but you have a, an even more substantial sound a big leg up from the GL10 um, and with that duplex scaling and especially those high treble notes over here just have that much more you know life in them and that much more you know musical excellence in them yeah. So I alluded to the GX series, so we're going to take a look in comparison to the GL series. Um, so this is the GL30, 5 foot 5 inches long. Um, they're all about the same width for all pianos, just as a side note. Um, the GX1 is also a 5 foot 5 inch piano, but there's a couple key differences. Um, so the uh, GL30 has a traditional rim where you've got layers of hardwood, you know, layer, 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 layer to make this kind of weird grand piano shape. Um, for the instrument. Um, and then in the GX, they have their Kansai Katagi rim. So that's going to be um, different hardwoods used um, with different size pores. Um, so this kind of blended hardwood rim is designed to um, add a more dynamic sound, more colorful sound um, as you're playing. Um, there's also, in terms of the bridge, right here this is uh the treble bridge is actually going to be vertically laminated that means all of the grains um, are going to go up and down um, uh, which makes it a little bit more direct to get that sound into the soundboard and this is going to be a more traditional uh bridge right here then another couple differences um, is the GL30 is going to have kind of a standard uh, phenol top right here um, this is actually going to have their neotex coated um, key tops. So these are designed to grip a little bit more on here, which is really nice. And then um, there's some nice aesthetic differences 
uh, between the two of them. Um, you've got um, just more layers of veneer on the plate, uh, more veneer on the rim. Um, this one actually has um, one, two, three uh, sticks so, so you can control different heights on it. Uh, the GL10 2030 um, only feature the two sticks. Uh, the GL40, GL50 have three sticks. Um, this does not lock. This one does lock, um, at least for the um, lid here. Um, so those are a couple of differences there, but we're gonna play the GL30 and we'll play the GL, uh, the GX1 right here. So, go ahead. between the, the main parts of the piano, the lower range, the mid range, and the upper range, each have kind of a more characteristic sound. So um, there's a little more in the way of, uh, you know, right out of the box voicing as it were on this piano. Thanks, Max. Alrighty, so now we're looking at, um, so we've gone from the uh, GX1 we're gonna go over to the uh, GL40. Uh, it's in a beautiful brown Tapelli mahogany. Um, so this is a 511 right here. Um, so we've got the uh, GL40 um, next to the GX2. So the GX2 is uh, the successor to the wildly popular flagship grand piano from Kauai, the RX2. Um, the RX2 has a traditional wooden rim, so if you've played an RX2 in the past, it's actually going to be a little bit closer to the GL40 in terms of some of the build um, for the sound. Um, you might recognize more of the RX2 in the GL40. Um, the uh, GX2 is going to um, still kind of be the performance level of the GX, um, but the two of them, um, some people prefer one over another, so we're going to play the two of them side by side. A little bit of a quick note um, on these larger sizes. I'm going to try getting in here. Um, the scale design's a little bit different, um, and because of that, um, the plate here is structured a little different. And uh, the A graphs here actually go instead of from one to 46, actually go from one to 54. So you get a little more A graph in there, um, and the scale design's a little different. Um, but the same differences uh, between the two of them apply um, at the GL. 40 and 50, you do have the, the locking lids and a few other nice touches, but the same phenol tops as the rest of the GL series. And if I go through too many specifications too quickly, you can always uh, check kawaiius.com or you can, ref you can uh, reach out to us and we're happy to clarify any differences here.
with a bigger instrument in the GL series. Um, it just gives you that much more control over the sound. There's a lot more depth to the sound. It still has that great, um, great feeling action. Altogether, um, the GL40 has actually been um, one of my favorites to play, especially in the GL series. It's, it's a really great instrument. Next up is the uh, GX2, so we'll play this right away. GX series, the thing that really stands out is that Neo text. It just, it's a very authentic feel. Um, it's really nice. You know, the difference that's made just from having that additional grip, um, it, it's a really big thing for the player. Um, so it just makes for a really nice, authentic playing experience. It's designed to have the pros of ivory in terms of grip with none of the negatives um, in terms of loss of life or uh, the fading or the chipping or other problems with ivory. Um, so this is the uh, GX2. Next up, we're going to go up one more size. Um, and we've got the GL50, which is the 6 foot 2 um, next to the GX three, which is also five foot two. So I'm going to shut up here and um, we're just going to hear the two of them back to back. And uh, you can kind of hear for yourself the GL50 and then the GX3. Again, that the Neotex really stands out to me because it, it's such a big um, improvement. Now with the GL, you have an amazing action, but when you combine it with the Neotex, then you not only have an amazing action, but you have an amazing feel to the keys along with that action. And this is something, you know, that's not really replicated in a lot of other brands. This really authentic feel. It's 
Yeah, the only other um, company on the market that does anything like this is actually Yamaha, and they have their own version of this on some of their instruments. But uh, besides a few Yamaha models, Kawhi is the only other option with uh, some of the GX series. It's really hard to you know verbally explain exactly just how great it feels, but you know once you have the chance to come in and really compare something side by side, it's it's night and day pretty awesome. And then we've got a treat for you. So this is our GX6. So this is the seven footer. Um, so this is this is quite the treat here. So we're just gonna play a little bit on this guy here. The only notable differences between the GX3 and the GL or the GX6 is they actually for the base bridge, um, the way it loops around is actually continuous. It's a continuous base bridge. Um, so that actually helps um, make it a more continuous sound since you've got such long bass strings. Um, you can, some, on some pianos we've seen on seven, fit, seven foot or larger, um, have problems where it just feels disconnected from the bass from the mid range. Um, so this has a kind of a smoother experience there, um, but just absolutely lovely. best sounding seven foot piano that I've ever played on. Um, part of the reason is the action remains remarkably crisp and light, which especially um, as you're looking at larger pianos, sometimes that does you know, come with slightly heavier keys. These keys are still very nice and light, really easy to maneuver around. Um, another really big thing I noticed um, is sometimes, especially with larger instruments, you can get a little bit muddy in the lower range. Um, that's not an issue at all here. You could differentiate each note very clearly. It's a very clean and clear piano, um, which especially when you have you know, strings that are stretching out that far, to be able to have you know, that really clear differentiation um, between the notes. It just makes for a very high quality instrument and you know one of the best playing pianos I've played on. Awesome. And we're going to kind of end up where we started with the action. I want to um, uh, kind of take a full action, uh, kind of show you a little bit about kind of the great engineering behind the Kawhi piano. One easy thing, just popping the uh, paw board off. Um, a lot of manufacturers put little screws here that um, get chewed up um, when you're taking it on and off, and this you just pop in and off. So that's one thing that I super appreciate. Another couple of things is um, when we take the uh, cheek blocks out, um, a lot of manufacturers use kind of light and flimsy screws here. Um, these, are, these are cast iron. Um, these are very, very strong. Um, real big and real easy to use um, on the fingers. It's kind of a, a nice little touch. Um, so these pop right out. Um, one thing that a lot of pianos suffer from is sticky keys. A lot of times that's because this big thin piece of wood um, up front um, actually warps a little bit. And so um, it'll catch the front of the keys and the key will stay down. So the nice thing about this is the key slip here is yes, a big thin piece of wood, but they actually have a piece of steel that's bent around here. So this is not warping. This is gonna stay very solid. So sticky keys, problem solved. So real nice um, piece right there. And then for the action, let's pull the whole darn thing out. And here you go. So this is the Kawhi Millennium 3 action. 
um, right here, kind of all the way out. A couple things to note on here. Um, one, um, all of the Millennium 3 actions are made in Japan, including um, the Millennium 3 actions that go into the GL10, GL20. All of the actions are, are made in Japan for the grand pianos here. Um, it's becoming more common, but Hawaii was a, a pioneer in using actual um, extruded steel here the, for the aluminum um, rail. Uh, so this doesn't warp, because if this warps, then all of your key measurements are, are off, which is a problem. Um, it also has more of these posts here uh, for supporting it. Um, this is serrated, um, and there's a little bit of rubber here, so this grips. It's totally locked in. This hammer is not going to be a Kimbo. Um, so it's going to go directly to the string the way it's supposed to. Um, just like with um, playing golf, if, you, if the head of your golf head um, hits the ball a little bit off, you can have kind of a disaster. So um, these are uh, really engineered to be rock solid, um, super long keys. Um, when they went to the Millennium 3 action, they actually extended the key stick length. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why the models are a little longer than they used to be, is to accommodate the longer key stick. And these buttons are real big, real solid for the pivot points on these. So the engineering that goes into these, these are just absolutely rock solid, which I can really, really appreciate. So um, thanks for watching. Um, that's a quick overview of pretty much all of the Kawaii models, except for the GL20 I don't have in stock. But um, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, my email is brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N, at familypiano.com, um, or info at family piano. That goes to all of us, uh, info at familypiano.com. Uh, you can call our main store number, 847-775-1988. You can visit our website. We've got live chat and some options there for reaching out to us. We're happy to do um, video tours um, where it's live with you. We can help answer your questions uh, and do this for, via video. Um, so we're not allowed to discuss uh, Kauai pricing, um, especially in a public video like this, but um, if you have any questions, including price, uh, reach out to us and we'll see what we can do. Thanks, guys.